uh, what do you call it, the precinct of uh, the sheriff's department or whatever, and say, here's an alien. It it it, it uh, made aggressive mood, uh, moves towards me, so I shot it and killed it. Here it is. Are we then going to get, uh, well, can I say this? Can Will they retaliate us for killing one of their own? I mean, a hundredfold over? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the uh, whole idea of uh, retribution and, uh, you know, what responsibilities and rights do uh, uh, these kinds of entities have, that's a, that's a whole paranormal legal issue right there that needs to be addressed and maybe quicker than we think. I don't know. I, you know, what was that one show where that spa- uh, spaceship landed and uh, the... Uh, the astronaut or the uh, alien come walking out of the spaceship and it was all these military men and their jeeps and tanks and cannons and somebody yeah. got nervous and shot him and killed him and the robot came out and then you know this laser beam came out of its forehead and started disintegrating all the tanks and all the men and everything and you know brought him back in the sa- uh, spaceship and regenerated the guy for a short term mm-hmm Klaatu Barado Nikto. Yeah. That was the the day the earth stood still. The classic uh, film with Michael Rennie as the uh, alien. Yeah. And could... the big uh, robot is his, his sidekick. Yeah. Who was the actress that fell in love with him? I'm trying to think. Gosh. Remember. She is very famous. Um, I can Google it while we're talking if you'd like, but uh, that was just a classic uh, 1950s you know, film uh, that uh, really made people think, I believe. Well, I think it was ahead of its time because, you know what, I could see that right now, right? If a UFO actually landed, right? And somebody came out and basically wanted to communicate, right? Because in this case, he was carrying a device he wanted to give to our leader. It would help every, you know, ease man's, you know, problems. And he, he got shot and killed. But think about it. Our military, if a UFO landed, you know, let's say, let's say like in Newburgh, Oregon, where, you know, there was a, a UFO there and it was found. I mean, it wouldn't take very long and you'd have black ops, you'd have the military, you would have it all closed off. And how would they retaliate with us? I mean, they could just look at us and zap. They're all gone. Just like in that movie, you know, we, we'd be gone. I Let's face it. I mean, our weapons are not going to defend ourselves. Uh, I don't care how sophisticated our weaponry has gotten. It's not going to really protect us against another race that far advanced. Oh, gosh, uh, Gary, it was Patricia Neal. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Very beautiful-looking woman. Uh, Michael Rennie was the alien in Klaatu and... Uh, uh, Hugh Marlowe was uh, one of the, oh, and Sam Jaffe was in that film as well. Um, so it's uh, interesting, uh, 1951 was that movie. Oh, yeah, and they, it really had a, a point to make. I love how he stopped all the clocks, you know, worldwide, they shut the power off, people were, the you know, power went out, the, you know, people were stuck in elevators, everything just shut down. When right. He, this is to a point that, they could control us way more than we could ever even imagine. <clears throat> exactly. And by the way, uh, there was the famous remake of that film um, with Keanu, Keanu Reeves uh, in the main part as well. That was uh, kind of kind of an interesting remake of the same kind of idea. Well, it gets people thinking, you know, I, what can I say? I mean, it just, I don't know. This whole thing about UFOs is, is really in my mind right now because, again, uh, as you've been doing your show for a longer period of time, and if you create, you should, would, we should create you an email address, okay, mm-hmm. for the show. You will start getting people, and you'll be shocked of all the type of emails you will get. And like I said, a lot of them, you know, you, you look at them and you kind of like laugh a little bit afterwards. But then there's those ones you you read it. And, you know, it's just like that little um, thing you got from that guy. It handed you that, well, how spaceships propel themselves. I mean, I get those type of things about 
aliens all the time. Not about how they propel themselves, but like they're here on Earth now or things like yeah. that. I mean, especially like when I had Mary Joyce on the show again the other night. I mean, after she was on, I got a ton of emails of people, you know, that's probably why I'm getting more about like the guy from Oregon stepping up and saying things because she was just recently on the show. Yeah, could be. You're you're finally drawing these, uh, um, you know, people that stories that are finally coming out and feeling free to talk to you because you're having these subjects talk so freely on the Night Dreams Talk Radio. I think that's fascinating. Well, if you notice, I have never made fun of anybody or laughed or told them they were crazy like some shows would do. And, right. you know, the, the point is, I think they can, you know, email me or get on the show and I think they can tell how they feel. And again, there's a lot of people out there are scared. I mean, seriously, scared to tell people, well, I saw a UFO or I saw an alien or or I saw even a Bigfoot. They're scared to, to tell anybody because... They don't want to be labeled as a nut. And a lot of them have very important careers, which, you know, if they sat there and said, well, I saw a UFO or I saw three aliens walking on a side road, you know, kind of, you know, strangely walking with, you know, long arms and, and, and their faces were really horrible looking that they're beyond. The guy said beyond anything you could ever describe as ugly. That's what he said. Wow. And that, you know, and that stands the point because, I mean, we are here, we look like what we look like because one of our gravity on our planet and all that stuff really controls how we look. So if you go on a planet, it has less gravity or more gravity. It's going to affect the way we end up looking, how tall we are, how our face forms, how our whatever. And then the, 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 the uh, genetics and all that stuff, all that. So, I mean, what we think is, you know, a humanoid might not even be humanoid. I have no idea. Yeah, but I think you'll uh, like this uh, idea from Peter Davenport, who sent me a text just uh, recently here. He says, uh, how would we like it on Night Dreams Talk Radio if he not only came on and give us these uh, updated sighting reports, but he brought on the actual witnesses with him, and we could actually interview them about what did these aliens look like that you saw? That kind of thing. I, I think that would be fascinating to get some of these uh, witnesses on radio. Yeah. And I mean, if they want, you know, I'm all for it. I mean, you know, we don't, they don't have to give their names or what they do. But, I mean, I think it would be important to get that out. I really do. And, and you know what? It's up to the person who's listening to the show to believe it or not. I mean, as I have always told everybody, this, this show is nothing more than entertainment. And that's what you have to take it as. It's entertainment. So, you know, you have to make a decision if it's true or not, or even possibly, you know, true. So that, that's the whole point of the show. Yeah. I think people will be able to discern uh, what is the truth uh, from their perspective if they hear it all, if we give them whatever information we can, can glean. Well, I will say this. I, I, I predict in your case, doing your show, it's going to take about a month or so. You're going to, you know, if again, it's important you create an email account for your show. And all right. you will get people, you know, asking you stuff, telling you stuff. And you're going to learn a lot more, I hate to say it, than you have in the UFO thing <laughs> very fastly. I mean, like I said, there isn't a day I don't get an email from people telling me all kinds of wild things. Again, do I believe it? I don't know. I, I Until I see it, I kind of like, how can I say it? I, I just take it in stride. But I don't disbelieve it either because I've seen things in my life that uh, are totally unexplainable. So, yeah, I mean, you yeah. know, that's the scary part. And, yeah, I, I I, don't know if we are being abducted or not, or if we're being harvested, not being harvested, or if we're just here to, to help mankind, or, again, maybe a sightseers uh, from some planet, just to take pictures of the wildlife on Earth before it disappears. <laughs> yes. So uh, we got like about four minutes left. Uh, where, you, where do you want to take your show? 
on Night Dreams, the Paranormal Lawyer on Saturdays. What, 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 tell the people out there what your plans are on your show. Well, you know, my plans would be to uh, get the guests on uh, our show, mine specifically, that we can actually get them to divulge more information that they normally would not give on a radio interview. I think you have that ability, Gary, as and I'm trying to emulate it as well. Well, look at it, look at what happened tonight. Yes. Okay, we were going to talk about, you know, horses and and you know, bringing people's emotional problems and all that stuff. But she intrigued me when she told me she was a criminal attorney for like 13 years and i it was a lot of questions on that and and she you know we we got the information out yes and the fact that she uh opened up about her um her entire life and how it changed you know with her health issues and uh the whole idea that she finally got into a career uh that she really loved to do this was her passion now uh, and uh, those kinds of things are what I intend to elicit from uh, my guests. You know, whether they're going to talk about UFOs or Bigfoots or ghosts or uh, even the uh, legal ramifications of certain uh, paranormal fields, uh, I think we can probably drill a lot deeper than, than they are used to, uh, you know, in their interviews. And I think people will be, will find that compelling actually. Well, they must be because I mean, the, the audience is growing so large and it's growing every day. And I think it's because, you know what? I, I take every person it's on guest on the show and I give them the opportunity to, you know, say what they want to say. I don't mock them. I don't make fun of them. You know, and I, I I try to get as much information as I can to back up what their stories are, but I try to get the people to be what they are, real, and, and get out their emotions, and that's what's important on this show. Yeah, and, and you don't necessarily ask them this, the same standard questions that they've heard every time they get on a radio show. You're coming at it from a different angle. Uh, you're much more relaxed than most of the radio show hosts out there. That's what I would like to be able to provide our guests as well as a good, uh, uh, in, enjoyable, uh, re, you know, en, uh, relationship and an entertainment kind of an atmosphere that they can just uh, kick back and really tell us what they think. Well, you know, the same way when you came in my studio, you know, it's small, but I mean, uh, I have a couch here for when I do have company. And I occasionally do. And, and a lot of times, you know, it's the same way. I look at when I talk to you or a guest or whatever, I feel like we're friends, number one. Number two is like we're talking and sitting on the couch or sitting on the kitchen table. And that's how I, I try to conduct my interviews. And, and I'll be honest with you, I have my motives. I know what I'm going to do ahead of time. I do as much research as I can on the person. And I know when to kind of deviate away from, you know, the topic and, and get more information, more about the person themselves or their views or what the topic is that the other guys don't do. And I'm sorry, we learned, like tonight, we learned a lot about the criminal system. We we learned a lot of things that a lot of people didn't realize. And if mm -hmm. I would have just did a normal thing, well, we could have talked for a half an hour about you know, uh, uh, coaching and with horses and all this stuff. And that's all we would have learned, but we learned a lot more besides. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way you allow the, uh, the guest, I believe to feel comfortable. I think that's important. Well, I don't, I want them to feel comfortable being on the show and, and I want them to feel that they can say virtually anything and, and, and be comfortable with that. And honestly, uh, the guest we had tonight, she was a fantastic guest and I, and I'm happy for her, you know, because again, you have your health issues. I have mine. She had hers. And, and once you have a health condition, like, you know, that you don't know if you're going to live or not, or you don't know how long you're going to live, it mm -hmm. changes your whole outlook in life. And that's like how my, my show is. I could be probably a jerk like some of these people. And, and a lot of people don't realize when you go on a lot of these talk shows, the, the the host is actually putting the guests down and the guests don't realize it. 
Mm-hmm. That's that's not good. Yeah. No, I'm so glad to be a part of this network and uh, 